phone is how we're all connected in this room. So if everyone in this room is connected on this arc, this arc, and this arc. So, uh, so by all, if I start with Lewis Cone, and Lewis Cone is my great-grandfather. Yes, Lewis Cone is my great-grandfather. So if you're my generation, which would be Dickie, Karen, Bonnie, uh, everybody, Mitch, uh, most of us, I think, um, then this chart applies. So there's a little bit of math here. And, um, Bonnie, is Bonnie here? Bonnie, okay, good. Bonnie's the so same generation. So Bonnie uh, started out with math at Northwestern and then uh, didn't like it. So, but we're going to give her a chance to redeem herself. So how this works is, if you are my generation, then everything here is correct. If you're a generation older than me, so for example, my dad, Rail, or Duane, then you would subtract one of these numbers. Uh, so this would actually be the fourth generation. And just get rid of one G. If you get rid of one G. So, Whereas this is my great 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 grandmother, it would be my dad's great great grandmother. If you're a generation younger than me, so that would be my kids, Avi, Rockman, Shira, uh, and those people, that would be, you would have to add a number here, this would be your sixth generation, but you'd add one more piece. So that's kind of how the math works. And if you want to really do the math, you take the generation number and put two to the X, with X being the generation. Uh, it will help us with this. Okay. And Bonnie, I'm going to give you a pen, and there's a paper on the table, you're welcome to look at it, it's the cohn Polinsky reunion, actually, so Bonnie, I'm going to give you a pen, and you're going to keep track for us. So, just as a show of hands, uh, raise your hand for so if you know some or all of your parents' name, raise your hand. You know some or all of your parents' name. Raise your hand. All right. Okay. If you know some or all of your great grandparents, or your grandparents, your grandparents' name, raise your hand. If you know some of your the names of some of your great grandparents, raise your hand. Remember, we're starting to go down a little bit. If you know the name of some or all of your great great grandparents, raise your hand. Okay, we get smaller. If you know some or all the names of your great, great, great grandparents, raise your hand. So we have one, two, one or two. Okay. So Bonnie, we're all connected here. So at the end of the talk, we're going to see how many people we know. So what we're going to keep track is uh, we're going to make it. Uh, we're just going to go right to here. So uh, great, great grandparents. As we go through the talk. If you come across a name, I said this is our great great grandparents, write it down because we have four in this quadrant. Now, really, we all have 16, but we're cutting out, so that's that two then. So you would actually have 16 great great grandparents, but since we're doing the clone Polinsky only, it'll be this quadrant. And our great 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 grandparents, uh, although we actually have 32 of them, for this reunion, the ones that are connected here are eight. So there's a choice of eight. We'll see how many we get to. So, let's start the talk, and um, I don't know if you've seen a TV show on TLC, it's called Who Do You Think You Are? It's actually kind of a cool show, I think. It's the same premise every time. So, it's usually a TV star, and the TV star is the focus of that show, and they're going to do their genealogy, and what usually happens is the TV star says, you know, I never talked to my grandma when she passed away, but I, I think she said we are from Ireland, and then she, they will then get a genealogist in the United States, and the genealogists will sit down and they'll go to the census and they say, oh yeah, here at Ellis Island, you know, your, your, uh, your grandmother came from Ireland. So if you want to learn more, you're going to have to fly to Ellis Island. So then they would, the person the star would fly to Ellis Island and say, yes, they came on this boat on this day from Ellis Island and they came from this town in Ireland and then they say, if you want to learn more, you're going to have to fly to Ireland. And then the star would fly to this town show. And then they'd fly to Ireland and, uh, they sit down with the genealogist in Ireland and they, they would go through all the history and they find some records and they were old by then and, and they said, yes, your family's been in Ireland for 50 years, but they, they came from China, you're really Chinese. <laughs> and if you want to learn more, then you're going to have to fly to China. And they would fly to Shanghai, the genealogist would be there and say, yes, your family's been in China for 200 years, you're descended from Chinese royalty. Uh, 
And then they would always find like there was one brother, one sister that like it was the last sheep of the family when they talked about. It. That's how the show went. So that's we're not gonna fly anywhere, I'm gonna do the work for you here. So so we're gonna ask uh, for special thanks for the Cone Family Reunion. Now on the TV show, it's Ancestry.com that sponsored the TV show, I'm pretty sure. Here it'll be. So I want to thank Rabbi uh, Rockman for arranging and sponsoring this day's event. And he, he did have some help, so I want to thank Karen Katz, Luann Bongard, and Viola Heifetz for the pictures that we're running in the slideshow that Mitch has been working on until 2 a.m. every day for the last three weeks. And then I do want to just, uh, thank my cousin Bonnie Goldfish for letting us use first in the guy. Too many people own their own synagogue, but uh, you, you are not the first or only cone descendant of your own synagogue. To know who you are, you have to know where you came from. Gave, uh, there's a whole contingency of cones in uh, California. So several years ago, I gave an abbreviated version of this. It was August 13, 2011. So some of this is from there, and then we've added to personalize it. But again, there's still our relatives out there. Unfortunately, I don't think any of them came in from California. So and yet, this is the synagogue. It's like Shabbos. So because I think you know, we want to go home after we want to be here all day. So no interruptions. So could I ask that everyone? Just turn off their cell phones so we don't have to disturb it. Thank you. So you might be wondering what that has to do with phones. So, uh, short of Kabbalah, Jews, we don't believe Jews theirs and fortune tellers, but uh, something really strange about Midge, and uh, we're all familiar with AOL, Just one America thing. Online, but uh, somehow, Midge, this is about what, five, six, probably about five, six years ago this happened, the strangest I'll show you in a moment, there's something called HOL, which is Kevin Online, and uh, Midge started getting these bizarre emails. <laughs> From HOL, and I think Mitch, is this the first. Is this the first one? Yeah. Okay. Let me read you. So it's it's from. Let's see my pointer here. It's from uh, GodyCone at HOL.com to M. Look at AOL.com. Cone family history. So I'll just read the first one if that's okay. So dear great great granddaughter Mitch, you probably don't remember me since I've been dead for over 110 years. I'm Mordecai Godi Cone, your great great grandfather. Are you keeping track? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I have been watching over the family for more than a century, and I'm just so proud of every one of my descendants. I have so much. <laughs> I I have so much information to share with you about our proud family history. I will be <laughs> tragic history of the family. <laughs> I have. So much information to share with you about our proud family history. I will be sending you pictures and stories via HOL Heaven Online. If any of the relatives are interested in genealogy, please share this information with them at one of the family parties. Love, great, great grandfather Cody. So this is like perfect timing. This is great. <laughs> Let me, let me read it. Hi, great great granddaughter Mitch. Okay, you're going to need right back. Okay. <laughs> Hi, great great grandfather. Thank you for He's writing back. Here, I'll read it. 
I'm so excited to hear Steve's talk about the Cone family. Why don't you do your right back? He's taking the time. I mean, we'll, we'll stop. Don't worry. We'll stop it. Why don't you write him down? What, what, what did you write? I'll read it for you. Do you know a good eye doctor? Steve's speaking right now. You know he's the favorite cousin. So a little past history here. So Kohen, or Kohanim, uh, is used in the Torah to refer to the priests. Jewish tradition is that all Kohanim are direct descendants of Moses' brother Aaron, the original Kohen. The line of the Kohanim is patrilineal. It has been passed from father to son without interruption from Aaron for 3,300 years, or more than 100 generations. I'm not going to make you go back on the generations, but it's not going to uh, Cats is a Hebrew abbreviation for Kohen study. So theoretically, all the poems and cats are our cousins. And uh, it's not just the Torah, we can put a little science, there's a lot of our physicians, a lot of people are physicians here now. So Dr. Carl Skorecki and associates gather DNA samples from the Y chromosome of the male. Y chromosome, they identified a particular array of six chromosomal markers found in 97 of the 106 cones tested. This collection of markers has come to be known as the cone modal haplotype the standard genetic signature of a Jewish priestly family. The chance of those six occurring randomly is less than one in 10,000. So this shows a clear genetic relationship among Kohanim and their direct lineage from the common ancestors. The research findings support the Torah statement that the line of Aaron will last throughout history. So uh, the Kohanim are actually treated differently in, in uh, the Jewish religion. So you know you're Jewish from your matrilineal lineage but your uh, Kohen or your tribe is from your, your father's side. So we were actually in uh, Toronto, Andrew and I were in Toronto at a synagogue, and they actually treat the Kohen pretty nice. They have their own entrance to the synagogue. And I remember as a child, Rabbi Aronson was the Kohen, I believe. And uh, I remember as a kid, he used to kind of stand up at the old Bethel and do that weird thing with his hands. I, remember it. I can't, I don't know what it was. But uh, so he used to stand up with that. I think there's, so there's something about the hands, and then he would do the blessing. Um, that Margot's going to help us here. <laughs> if you'll, you'll remember when you hear it. From my Jewish background, it's 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 uh, it's a gesture that the uh, that's used in a priestly benediction during the uh, uh, Jewish services in synagogues. The uh, the Kohanim, who are the priest tribe, bless the congregation when they do. They use this gesture, which is this is the shape of the letter Shin, Hebrew alphabet, uh, letter Shin, and the letter Shin is the first letter in the word Shaddai, which is the Almighty's name in Hebrew. And the suggestion is that they're using the symbol of the Almighty's name as they bless the congregation. I saw it done as a kid, was entranced by it, learned how to do it, and I brought it into Star Trek. So, cousin Leonard Nimoy uh, <laughs> couldn't, couldn't make it, mostly because he's passed away. But I actually did meet him. He came to our door, and in my dorm. He was looking for his dog. That was, uh, <laughs> so, we have to see him. Uh, and then we have cousins in Duluth. You might be shocked to hear that we have some cousins in Duluth. And uh, one of them is Robert Zimmerman, and uh, he was a he probably he was a songwriter. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I don't know if he's directly a coin, but he borrowed his uh, musical style from it. And I don't know if you realize it, 
this is true, actually, one of the few things I'm going to say is true tonight. <laughs> So this is the line of Aaron, starting with Aaron and going through, remember I said over a hundred generations. Now again, I gave a talk originally in California. So the last hundred generations were Pinkus Cohn, Mordecai Cohn, Louis Cohn, Jerry Cohn, and Corey Cohn, my cousin, our cousin. So there, there's our family tree going back 3,000 years. But it didn't fit on that piece of paper, so we, we only went back a few. So, who, remember the show is called, Who Do You Think You Are and How Did We Get Here? <coughs> well, I just said, we started with Aaron. So Aaron, you probably know his brother Moses. And uh, they lived in Egypt in 1300 BCE. And then they left for about 40 years. And they kind of were traveling around in the Sinai. And uh, then they kind of settled in Jerusalem. And they stayed there from... 1200 BCE to about eight to the 1800s in the Common Era. And then I don't really know what happened exactly next or what prompted it, but I think it was, you know, Mrs. Collins said, it's too hot here, it's dusty, can't get a good bagel. So the family, the own family migrated to the Ukraine in around 1850. And then they stayed there for a while and then uh, they emigrated to Duluth in 1886. I, I, I don't exactly know why. I'm going to give you a theory about why they, they left. But can you imagine this? Is, can you imagine what it took to do that? I mean, I'm sure there was a life-changing event. Take your whole family, coming half a world away, and uh, you know, I don't you in particular. So Andrea, my wife, is from New York City, and then we to Los Angeles, and then I met her in Los Angeles, and um, you know, we decided to move back here to Minneapolis where I'm from and to Andrea, this was just fly over the country. I mean, that was, it was traumatic. And, I mean, we had discussions back and forth and I can only imagine what our Cohen ancestors must have, must have thought. So, I, I think I, I have an idea what they might have said. Andrew, can you come up here and help me for a moment? <laughs> I, I think I'm Mr. Cohen, and I feel be Mrs. Cohen. So we're, in, we're kind of we're talking about leaving Ukraine, going to Duluth. So, so Duluth, Minnesota is the place for me. The Sabi Range is the life for me. Land spreading out so far and wide. Keep key up, just give me that countryside. No, Jerusalem is where I'd rather stay. I get allergic smelling hay. God, I just adore the Steffel view. Darling, I love you, but give me Park Avenue. <laughs> My guess is. 80 a quarter of the people in this room have any idea what <laughs> So uh, they settled in Duluth in 1986. We'll give you, a, you know, a, a conjecture about why I think that hurt. Somebody actually knows. Please stop and tell me. Oh, there you raise your hand. Why did they settle in Well, I'll come back to that, I think. Yeah. And then uh, they got the urge to move again. So uh, they left, uh, they started leaving Duluth. Came to Minneapolis about 1922. There was a contingency that went to Los Angeles in the 1930s. There was a highly mobile group uh, that went down to the, to the southeast, uh, North Carolina, Florida, and that merged to move to Colorado for some reason. So, and then other parts. So this is what uh, when Lewis and Cashy Cohn saw when they got to Duluth. This is the map of Duluth in 1886. And at that time, the population of Duluth was 35,000. And this is what it looked like at the time. And uh, so again, just to get you oriented, Lewis Cohn is, we're all related to Lewis Cohn and his children. Lewis Cohn married Cashcom. Lewis had a brother, Nathan, and uh, Lewis Cohn's father was Mordecai Godi Cohn, that's who sent that uh, text message and the email originally. And Bonnie's keeping track here. And then uh, Mordecai's wife was Ruth. Rivka, and then uh, Mordecai's uh, father was Pinkus Cone, and Annie, uh, Annie, I don't know Annie's last name, and I probably wasn't really Annie, 
Kahana. So Pincus Cohen, and even Pincus Cohen's father lived in Jerusalem. So I don't know if they went all the way back to 1200 BC, but they went back a really long time. And uh, took three trips to Duluth until I finally figured this one out. So this is uh, the obituary from Go Mordecai Godi Cohen. In case you didn't read your Duluth Evening Herald on April 13, 1900, <laughs> I will read it for you. Uh, Duluth's oldest citizen passed quietly away yesterday, and before his body was laid to and before evening, his body was laid to rest on a grassy slope in the Hebrew cemetery in the presence of those who loved him in life and revered him, stark in death. The deceased was Godi Cohn, and he was 98 years of age, born in Jerusalem on January 11, 1802. He had lived almost a century, and in many ways was a most remarkable man. From Jerusalem, his family moved to Russia, which was actually the Ukraine, where he spent most of his life. But about 12 years ago, Russian oppression drove him and many others to seek refuge in this country. Mr. Cohn and his family came direct to Duluth, where they had friends <coughs> living. So that's our first clue why they came to Duluth. We don't know who the friends are. And since that time, he has been one of the most prominent Hebrew citizens. He leaves a wife, 86 years of age, and two sons, Louis Cohn, our everyone in this room, and Nathan Cohn, both in business in this city. The deceased came from a family of long lives. This is impressive. His father died at the age of 99, and his grandfather at age 105. Wow. This is the 1700s or before. Crazy. Amazing. Up to the last moment of his life, he was perfectly conscious and in full possession of his hearing and left and right. And the headstone, which is what took me forever because it is so worn, says, Here is in turn the old man, the honored Rob Mordecai, God's son of Pincus the Pope. And not to leave the Ema Moat, but his wife was Rivka, same story. Uh, it took forever because it's really. Baby. But uh, she lived from 1850 to 1900. Rivka Sos Riseki Kohn. Uh, Here is in turn the important woman, Rivka, daughter of Rob, Joseph, and Maida. Keeping track, honey? Okay. It's hard to keep track of there. And here they are. This is Mordecai Godi Kohn and uh, Rivka Kohn. This is, uh, depending on who you are, these are great great grandparents. Great great. A lot of, there's a lot of greats. <laughs> And if you're really young, it's even one more grade. That's pretty cool, that picture, you know. Uh, remember, Mordecai and Rivka had two sons that came to Luth. I don't know if they had more sons, but two came to Luth. Louis, and everyone in this room, is descended from Louis. And he was uh, born around 1860 at Kiev. And I don't have a picture of his brother Nathan, although here's the 1895 Luth census. And although here it says Daniel Cohen as a goni. And I think he was born in Jerusalem. It says Russia here, but I have another one that said he was actually from. Jerusalem. So these censuses were really uh, not trustworthy. And uh, so, Bonnie, uh, you're the great, great, you're the great granddaughter of Louis Cohn. Is that right? You're the great granddaughter of Louis Cohn. Bonnie's an eye doctor. Besides owning the synagogue, she <laughs> is an eye doctor. And your uh, comparator on the other side of the family is uh, Robert Blasberg, who great grandson of me, who's also a guy down here. So it's kind of parallel, uh, parallel life here. And here's Louis Cohn's obituary. Uh, so he, uh, again, if you didn't read the newspaper, April 27, 1918. <laughs> Louis Cohn, age 62, died yesterday in his home. Uh, he died of pleurisy. Uh, the deceased was a pioneer of Duluth for 32 years. Uh, he is survived by his wife and two sons, Morris and Henry, yes, both of Duluth, and six daughters. Uh, Mrs. Louis Janowski, Mrs. Uh, uh, Morris Steiner, uh, Eva, Maddie, and Viola Cohn, Paul Duluth, and Miss uh, Jay Bernstein of uh, Richmond, Wisconsin. And here's his headstone, Yehuda Lahey, son of Mordecai God, yeah. Cohen. So I happen to know for a fact that we have young medical students, or actually young doctors here. And so your diagnosis, Aaron, uh, he died in 1918 of pleurisy. So like. How many people at Abbott have you seen that died of pleurisy? It's not very common. Yeah, so I, I'm not sure he died of pleurisy, but do you remember from medical school what did happen in 1918? The flu. Yeah, the Spanish flu wiped out about two or three million people worldwide. And I'm going to bet that's probably what he died of, pleurisy. So it's 1918 flu epidemic. And uh, his wife was Kashi Polinski-Cohen, and I just met just now Nathan Polinski. 
And so Nathan's actually doubly related to us uh, because he found the coincide and the Flinsky sites on both sides. Uh, so this is a picture of Pashu from 1862 to 1940. Uh, this is Pashu with my grandmother Viola, and this is Pashu with my dad Rail. And here's Herkut Stone, and Pashu's the daughter of Rabbi Abraham Flinsky on his keeping track. So Abraham is your great great something. A lot of great My great grandfather's brother is Abraham. Okay. Very good. And uh, so there's a lot of Shinowski relatives here. And there was a very bad game in the Shinowski family uh, on December, it was probably 16th, 1940. And uh, so Sadie Cohn, Sadie Cohn, uh, was the daughter of Cashy Cohn and the wife of Louis Shinowski, and they died within a day of each other. So she lost her mother and her husband within a day of each other. No, kind of a bad day. You can read through if you like, but uh, I think that was the, the point. It's kind of a sad day in the family, I'm sure. So I don't expect you to be able to read all this, but um, I, so Pashi Polinsky's father was Abraham Polinsky, and his wife was Sarah Shale Teplitsky, and I hope I just keep you track as I can. And Abraham's father was Hannah Polinsky, and Abraham's mother was Eva Siegels. And Hannah was born in 1790, and Eva was also born in 1790. And so the question comes up, why, why do we, you know, besides the Green Acres thing, we don't really know why. Because in 1870, that was the first recorded Jew in Duluth. It was Bernard Silverstein, he was from Budapest. So he's not even... Um, from the same area. And by 1905, the Jewish population had gone up to 1,000. So here's Pashi Polinsky and Lewis. And I could only find three families that came from the Ukraine. Because remember, on Godin, it said he came because he had friends here. So uh, the choices were Polinsky family, or Orokoski family, and then the Cone family. So three families in Ukraine emigrated to Lewis in the 1880s. Orokoski came in 1881. And I'm suspicious, I think that's the friends living in Duluth. And in fact, you'll see the names Sam Lewis Polinsky, and Pasha's brother, married in Horikovsky, and there's, you're going to see this over and over again. Uh, the Polinsky family, so Pasha's brother and Pasha's father came in 1885 and 1886. And the Cohn family came in 1886. And so why did they come in the 1880s? Well, it turned out world history. The Eastern European pogroms began after the assassination of Tsar Alexander II in 1881. The Kiev, Ukraine, remember that's where I think they're from, the Kiev, Ukraine pogrom of 1881 was considered the worst that took place. Alexander III engaged in anti-Semitic policies such as tightened restrictions on where Jews could live in the Pale of Settlement and restricted the occupations that Jews could attain. The pogroms of 1881 occurred at the beginning of Alexander III's reign. Policies under both Alexander III and his successor, Nicholas II, encouraged Jews to emigrate from 1881 on. Um, and again, that's why that there's this mass emigration out of uh, Eastern Europe. The German Jews came before that, but you'll notice that the European Jews start coming in 1881, and this is exactly the reason why. And our family tended to come earlier. And again, I don't expect anyone to read this, I just want to point out. So Abraham Polinsky's father was Hannah, and his mother was uh, Eva Siegel. And uh, Abraham Polinsky had a daughter, Pashi Polinsky, who is our Pashi, Louis Cohen married her. This is all of our lineage, this is all of us. Uh, Pashi had a brother, Sam Louis Polinsky, uh, who, married a, who also married a Polinsky, I don't know if they're related or not. Same last name, and Austin Orkowski, and this is their lineage. And you'll see this back and forth, Orkowski, Marina Polinsky. And um, I'm sure you all know that Jewish geography with Duluth, if there's any connection with Duluth, we're related to them. And there's six degrees of separation, there's not even six, it doesn't take six. So um, over here, uh, the, you know, the Brodies, the Davises, Leeds, this is how our connection is. It was through Pashi's side. So Pashi's. Uh, was it Apache's sister was Rivka Polinsky, she married Levine, Nico Levine, and that's that lineage. And then here's that six degrees of separation. So Andrea and I went to UCLA, and Andrea took a Yiddish class what year? 1975. And she met uh, this uh, woman named Eileen. They were in Yiddish class together at UCLA, and somehow it came up that Andrea said, well, my boyfriend, uh, 
is from Minnesota. She said, oh, my grandparents are, my grandparents are from Minnesota. They're the Zalk family. So, that didn't even take, what, two degrees of separation? And they're, we're, you know, 2,000 miles away and we're connected, can't get away. This is Abraham Polinsky's uh, headstone up in Duluth. And this is our other great, great, great grandfather, I think, or great grandfather. Oh, this is Abraham Polinsky here. Get my pointer works. There's Sam with no face. That's Sam, that's the brother. And here's the kids. And so, uh, this is one of the daughters is Sarah, uh, Levant, and Eva Nidus. What is it? Nice? Nice. Thank you. I know I uh, Sadie Cohn and May Rubloff. Anybody live in Chicago or from Chicago? Okay. Is the name Rubloff sound familiar? Yeah, right? uh, giant real estate firm. If you go to the museum, there's a whole wing from the Rubloff family. Yeah. Ooh. That's our cousin. Ooh. So there's, uh, for our lineage, Lewis, there's eight tribes. So let's start talking about them a little bit. So here's the Cohn family. Uh, having a picnic uh, in the summer of 1911. And I'm not going to go through all the people quickly, but I think that's Maddie, and that's Viola. And um, let's see, who's back here? Let's see here, I think that is. Uh, it's uh, Rose Cohn. And uh, Judy Lyons here. Judy, your mother is the one that's being held right there. And uh, this is... Um, Sadie Cohn Janowski, and that's uh, Louis Janowski, so we're the representation here. And this is uh, Morris Cohn, who married yet another saint, and the names are all the same. It's very confusing. And uh, the Steiner family is here over on the end. So that's the early 1911. This is when they're a little more recognizable. So Louis and Cashy. And then here's the, the, the six girls and two boys. My author one. Anyways. So it's Viola, Rose, Henry, uh, Morris, Anna, Eva, and uh, Fanny. So they're a little more recognizable to me then. And this is at, uh, and, and Judy, this is at your mom's wedding, the Reverend Lyman's wedding. This picture is taken. Here's the girls. Uh, Viola, Maddie, Rose, and this is Cashy Polinsky, and this is Morris, and this is Sadie. And uh, Henry was not available in 1939 to be at the party, but his picture's hanging on the wall. And I think that's Godi, but I'm not sure. And uh, not, so now that we have this picture of everyone, we actually have the picture that was hanging on the wall in the same frame. That was kind of neat in my house right now. So let's do it like a little game. Let's do Cone Family Trivia. You can shout out the answer if you know it. I'll be shocked if you know it. So question number one. Who started to fair Israel Synagogue, the first Orthodox Synagogue in the movie? No takers. Well, uh, to fair Israel Synagogue started in 1890, at least this building did. And it was uh, the following members Goldstein, Polinsky, Isaac Polinsky was his ankle, Moses Polinsky, Nathan Cohn, Louis Cohn, ours, Sarovsky, Shapiro, and the Horakovsky. Horakovsky, they keep coming up. Question number two for our family trivia. The congregation actually started in 1880. Where were services held before the 1898 temple was built, and where did the Torah come from? Well, it turns out services were conducted for two years in the home of Louis Cohn on uh, Fourth Avenue East, and the Sefer Torah, which was used at that time, was brought from Russia by Mr. Cohn. That's pretty amazing because, you know, they came from Ukraine and Duluth, and I think they came on... Spirit Gold Line, which was the precursor of Spirit Airline, and you had to pay extra to print a ticket, and uh, you know, if you wanted to carry something and you didn't fit on the chair, if you had overhead on the boat, you had to pay extra, and then you had to pay for each luggage, so you had to bring the Torah over, and the top of the things you actually needed for life. That was, that was, that was pretty amazing. Okay, and then, so look at the founding members here again. Here's all their names. So let's just go through the founding ne members. So they mentioned Yankel Levine. Well, his wife, his wife Yankel Levine's wife, is uh, Rivka Polinsky. That was the sister of Pashi Cohn. And they mentioned Matt Schnowski, and that's Richard Rockland's great grandfather, and Karen Chesler's. And they mentioned Moses Polinsky, and that's the uncle of Pashi Cohn. And 
mentioned Joseph Polinsky, and that's the brother of Ashley Cohen, and Ethan Cohen's the brother of Lewis Cohen, so um, we got our own Seneca. We just started our own. Okay, question number three. Okay, Mordecai Godi Cohen was 84 years old when he came to home. What was his occupation after he arrived here? The very fact that you've been asking the question, what was his occupation at 84? Uh, so does anyone know what he, what he did when he came to the United States? He was the Hebrew school teacher in West Duluth. And actually, here's the source. So, one thing is the 1894 Duluth City Directory lists uh, Lewis Cohn as the Jewish school principal at 923 4th Avenue East and Godfrey, which is Goni Cohn, at the same address. And in the microprint here, it says in the 1880s that Goody, Goody Cohn tutored the children in the West End of Duluth and Abiyaka Koran uh, tutored on the east side. And for those of us who are in the Heifetz lineage, Viola, it turns out Abiyaka Koran's wife was Lena Begovich, which is Kesha Karen's niece. Wow. So we have the Hebrew school covered, and we own our own synagogue. <laughs> okay. Question number four, home family trivia. Which cone kept a blind pig in his store and ultimately was murdered because of that? Uncle Hank, Henry. Henry. So Henry stayed always at home, uh, and that's why he wasn't in the 1939 picture, because in nine, on December 28, 1922, he was murdered. And in the story, if you read through it, it says Henry Cohen, age 26, owned a grocery store on Superior Street, uh, was mysteriously shot to death early last night as he was alone in the store. Police this morning uh, were still seeking an unknown assailant. Uh, Viola Cohn, age 19, a sister of Cohn, worked in the store for her brother. So she, Viola worked, man, her whole life. She worked, I remember her Twin City over here. Uh, she arrived at the scene of the murder a short time after her mother, Pesha, who was almost hysterical. Miss Cohn, Viola, was sobbing, unable to collect her thoughts to give much information to the police. It was probably pretty hard on her brother. And uh, that Cohn may have been deeply implicated in liquor traffic, was brought out in inquest yesterday. Uh, Buck testified that he had heard six months ago that uh, Cohn was bootlegging. Police records show that Cohn paid a fine of $100 and a charge of keeping a book. A pig in your store. I don't want to buy a pig. That was just fascinating. Steve, my mother would tell who was Lois Shabelsky Jobby, born in 1980, tells me that she remembers as a child that her uncle Henry. My mother, Lois Janowski, uh, would tell the story that she remembered as a young child, when she was born in 1918, that her uncle Henry was making liquor in the bathtub. She didn't really know, but she just assumed that it was to help out his mother because times were tough. And that's a story. Confirmed. <laughs> So, uh, again, so this is that story again, and there's a picture of Viola and Henry. And again, police records show that Cohen paid a fine of $100 for keeping a blind pig in his confectionery store. And so when I saw this, for probably at least a year, I thought, who keeps a blind pig in his store? Until someone pointed out to me, it's a slang term for speakeasy, which is an establishment that sold illegal bootleg alcohol during Prohibition. And actually, the term is still used. This is the blind pig brewery at the University of Illinois in Champaign, Illinois. And my son, Adam Heifetz, uh, went to U of I. And Bonnie's daughter just started uh, uh, vet school, graduate school there a couple weeks ago. So I would tell her to stay away from that because blind pigs do not go well. <laughs> keep, her, keep her out of there. So, uh, So he was uh, murdered at the end of uh, uh, 1922, and I actually don't really know what happened. It looked like on January 13th I found this news article, Cone murder clues seen in three arrests. So I thought it was uh, solved, uh, but then a few days later it says clues to Cone's death are not developed. I, when you read the article, I'm not 100% sure it wasn't the police that killed him, to be honest, but I can't find it. Does anyone know any of that part of the story? I don't know how it ended. And this is a picture of it. It doesn't look like the booth. Uh, Jackie, does this look like the booth? Yeah. 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 Right. So the store was on Superior Street. So it was a pretty hustling, bustling uh, center of commerce in Duluth. That's where the store was. 
Okay, so question number five, our trivia. The grandchildren of Lewis Cohn published a family newspaper. What was it called and who was its editor? Okay, I know somebody in this room for sure knows the answer. Uh, so the newspaper was called the Cohn Clan Courier, and Leanne, <coughs> Luanne, a hype and spine guard, was the editor. And uh, so there was multiple stories, but this is the one I, I like the best. So I don't know, I don't remember what year it was. Uh, it was written by, this article was written by Nate Cohen, who changed his name to Owen. He was born in 1905, died in 1978. So remember, he actually was born after Godey died, so he's telling the story from the stories he heard. So I'm just going to read it. So Grandpa Lewis Cohen had a driving horse. You're going to see he was just, Nathan was enamored by his horse. So, uh, Lewis Cohn had a driving horse lugging sleigh. Once when the horse was tied up on Security Street, he ran away and ran into a big glass window. <laughs> Probably wasn't security jewelers, was it? <laughs> the uh, horse was okay, but Grandpa had to fix the window. Whenever Grandpa got angry, his favorite expression was, I don't know, dear, dear Hawkins, all to knit and earn an onion, translate to be hung, you shouldn't be, which, I don't know what that means. Uh, Grandpa had a limp from a horse that kicked him. Grandma Pashi worked very hard from early morning to late at night. She was an excellent cook and baker. It was said she could make a meal from a bone. She did all the family sewing. Nate was the only male grandson for five years. Aunt Vi, who was only two years older than Nate and the youngest of the eight children, was very spoiled. She was also quite a tomboy. She taught Nate how to spin a top and shoot marbles. She also beat Nate up until he was old enough to become his own. <laughs> Great grandfather Godie Cohn lived to be over 100 years old. It turned out to really nice. George Bernstein was named after him. He never worried and nothing seemed to bother him. The most major catastrophe could not make him move fast. That's because he was 98. Uh, he only did what he had to do when he was ready. He was also a very small but strong man. One time, when he went into the woods with his horse and sleigh to gather wood, the horse could not pull the sleigh because of all the snow. Cody unhitched the sleigh and pulled it himself. Another time, a grocer told him he could have two large sacks of potatoes if he could carry them. Cody lifted one sack on each shoulder and strolled nine blocks up the hill to his house. He was 95 at the time. <laughs> and now that we have a picture of Lewis and Cashy, we have a picture of their horse. The horse's name was Seuss. <laughs> and also, uh, when they got rid of the horse, uh, the Cones actually were one of the first families to have a car to the Luth, and they couldn't get up the hill, so they'd have to drive it backwards. And <laughs> Okay, question number six for the kids. Uh, does this family suck? <laughs> yes, actually, we are famous for sucking. Ashley Polinski's brother was Sam Lewis Polinski, and uh, his daughter, so the niece of Ashley, was Sheba June Polinski, and she married Abraham Orakowski, and they had a child named Irving. Yes. Hi, I'm David Oric. For over 40 years, I've been making vacuums designed to keep your home clean and sanitary. We are connected to the Oric Vacuum Company. That was Sheba's son. 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 Okay, question number seven. I'm going to answer this, please, because I blew my dad's name. What is the most common middle name in this family? Dan. Sales. 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 Oh, is this Sales. Sales. Maybe this Sales. Yeah. Uh, Henry Sales Cone, Lewis Sales Cone, it was actually Lou Sales until he broke up the two names. Rail Sales, Nathan's and Adam Sales Cone. And I have a clue. I mean, I'm sure it came from Henry Sales, but I don't know what the original is. Anyone have a clue? I cannot find any reference to a Jewish name, Sales. I thought maybe it was like Saul or something. Does anyone know? No? Such an odd name. Yes. Okay, how many sets of twins are there in the Cohen descendant family? Seven. How many? Seven. Margot and Ian. Is Margot here? Yes. Oh, okay. One set, one half of the set of twins is here. Ari and Sam Hector, both here. sets are here. Uh, Jack and Jerry Woodring, one lives in uh, Minneapolis, one lives in Los Angeles. Craig and Mark Cohen, I think they both passed away. Ashley and Jordana Mar Margulies Payne, Eric and Sarah Houston, their fathers Phil, who was here. Uh, actually, yeah, their father. Uh, Bella, Chloe, and Ezra Zacher, and he's not here. They live out in Philadelphia. And they're about, what, a year? No, almost 
school. Wow. Yeah, November. They're going to start school. Wow. <laughs> okay, so let's take a closer look at the tribes. So the Morris Cohen tribe, that's Leo, Nathan, Morris, George. And a little confusing because some of the sons kept the name Cohen, some kept changed it to Owen, and some it's Cowan. It's a little confusing. It's all the same family. And uh, so for your Chanowskis, this was the uh, wedding invitation to your great grandparents. This is the, the actual wedding invitation of Sadie to Louis Chanowski, and there they are. And the wedding was in 1904, and you couldn't get in unless you had this ticket. So the question was, why do we have a ticket? Because <laughs> they should have collected at the door. Uh, Sadie Contry. Oh my god, you guys, I know this is a, there's a big Chanowski. It's the same face. To me, it's the same, all the girls are the same face. And, you know, for me to try to pick out the pictures, it was really tough. I had to get a lot of help. And there is the Diddy. And Styler, Stuart Styler. And Sadie and, Lu and Lewis, and then all the girls. So we've got Flora, which came Rockland. Loretta, which came Chesler, and Jack. Uh, Ruth came Styler, and Lois, Libby, and Chuck. I think we're pretty well represented. They're represented. Uh, and then here's Richard's family, and I had the pleasure of meeting the girls uh, by email last week and in person yesterday. So we welcome them here. Tamara and uh, Shira and Avi. And Anne Cohen Tribe, so we have, um, we have some barbies here. So uh, Anne and Morris Steiner. And um, um, let's see. Harry Bernstein, you are not the oldest person in this family. You have a long way to go. Is Norm about 100? Norm is about 100? 99. 99. 99. Okay. But he's not here. I know, he's not here, but he's, <laughs> not, he's still part of the family. <laughs> he's still alive. <laughs> and Shady Barkey, so we were represented by Barkey's. And then Harold Steiner uh, lived in Milwaukee, and I went to medical school in Milwaukee, so I was at his house a lot. No, not Harold. When I was not Harold. Yeah, that's Harold worked for my dad. I know, but he lived in Milwaukee when oh, I was yeah, in medical school. Oh, yeah, but he wasn't in medical school. You were. I don't even know. Sorry. And then uh, Rose Cone tribe. And again, since some of this was in California, you may see or a bunch of pictures from that side. So, uh, Julius and Rose Bernstein. Mm -hmm. And then their two kids, George. And there's Harriet. Looks the same. Yeah. Hasn't changed the day since that picture was taken. And uh, uh, Noretta and her husband, Eugene Lana. And then Eva Ray Cone. They have each other. My dad, Ray, always named after Ray, Eva Ray. And then sales, where are they came from? And we sales Cone, we've already seen him. And here's Maddie Cone. Uh, that's the whole Los Angeles contingency. And of course, this picture shows them dancing, which would be perfect because they own a dance studio in Los Angeles. <laughs> they, were, they taught the stars how to dance. And you can too. Uh, so this is uh, our cousins in California. Um, and so it's Lewis, Jerry, Phil, uh, Shelly, and uh, Shana. So there's a few pictures. So there's Shana, she was gorgeous. And uh, there's uh, Maddie and Shana. And then Shelly uh, and Maddie. And then um, Bill Cohn had one of the sets of twins, uh, Mark and Craig. And this is the Cohn sisters. Uh, all smiling in Mexico, except for Bill, who was probably <laughs> dragged along, <laughs> not smiling at all. And then uh, our tribe, the Viola Cone tribe, and uh, Luann and my dad, Rael, and then Luann with Leon, and Rael with the mushroom. They're all here. What well, maybe my parents are here. And then we have all the kids of Jackie, and Jackie's kids, Heather, Stacy. And uh, the goofball side of their bridge. <laughs> we can thank you for doing all the work. And uh, then Bonnie's contingency. And then this is us. And uh, this is my three kids. And uh, if I told you that two of them are twins, I don't think you would pick them. It's this one and this one are twins. And Andrew and I, and for those of you who, uh, I'm wearing a key pod cover up all my hair, so. <laughs> <laughs> And then my sisters down, Lois, and their kids. And then my other sister, and twins again, here and here. 
You've got mail. So, well, it looks like we got another email. So can I, can I read it? Is it okay if I read it? Okay. So uh, this one's a little different. This one's uh, from Lewis Cohn at HOL.com, addressed to Mitch Frelick at AOL. Message from Lewis and Pashi. So I'll just go ahead and read it. So dear family, these things we've handed down are who you are, what you are, and where you are. You can thank us later. <laughs> Love, Lewis and Pashi Cohn. In some old and distant town From places no one here remembers Come the things we've handed down The things we've handed down, down. The things we've handed down Each of us has a defining moment that helps explain who we are and why we are. We thank you, Rabbi Dickie Rocco, for bringing us together today to explore our roots. We know how precious life is and how important family is to our own history, and there's a point in the story for that. At age seven, Rabbi Richard Rocco nearly died. He was walking across the street in his hometown of Duluth, Minnesota, when the car hit him. The accident crashed his skull, leaving him in critical condition. The doctor was worried and sent his mother to a synagogue to pray for her son. She had the Hebrew name Chaim, which means life, to Rockland's name. Miraculously, he did heal, but the accident had done more than heal him. It changed his life. About five years later, when he was 12, the importance of the accident became apparent. He was quoted saying, I was riding with a friend who had a driver's license at Rockland. That friend suggested that I should become a rabbi for one simple reason. God had saved my life. Rockland did, and the decision has been one that has given him great happiness. And again, we're all here because of that. Thank you so much. Uh, if you were here last night, there was a check-in. There was a check-in. There was a famous prayer. And then, so a check-in was a joyous blessing and you recited that you arrived on any long way of occasion, giving thanks to commemoration, including the beginning of the holiday, the first performance of certain of the year, and in particular, I think, us, when doing or experiencing something that occurs infrequently from which one derives pleasure benefit, or when seeing a friend or relative who's not been seen in uh, 30 days. So I'm probably the most distant relative here. I'm not really, anyway, I'm, I'm married this Saturday, so it's a great honor for me to, to lead you in the singing of Chef Yanu. And uh, Steve, that was incredible. I was like, without being any connected other than Mary and uh, I was totally captivated by the, the whole thing. And the, the amount of work that you put in, unbelievable. And just for your, 
just, just in case you wanted to know, Steve is still practicing cardiology on the side. <laughs> so when we all join together. Baruch Atah Adonai to know who you are, you have to know where you came from.